everybody, welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. Today, we're gonna tackle the last list of little uh, detail -y things we have to do to finish off this Fordson E27N. Let's get to work. There's the first step. We got our snazzy new steering wheel on for keeps with a nice ball bearing spinner installed on it. Next off, I've got this starting instruction decal to put on it. Um, from what I was able to gather, it probably goes right about there on the fuel tank, but I'm short and that's hard to read. And then some other guys were uh, making jokes about the quality of my reproduction decal here. So I don't know, I'm maybe going to find a different, I might put it right here on the fuel tank. I was going to even put it here on the battery box. So it's not really stuck on the tractor, you know, but anyway, I think what I'm going to settle on is, is right here. There we are. It's probably not the highest quality reproduction you could get, but I really don't care. It's better than nothing. And it's got to have some union jacks on it. I really was really, really, really tempted to, to break a line across here and do the whole top of the fuel tank as a giant union jack. But, um, a man has to know his limitations and uh, just sticking on a little sticker is maybe at the top of my qualifications as an artist. <laughs> anyway, now we've got to do some uh, touch-ups here and there on the blue paint. Stuff like this nut and bolt. There's a nut and bolt there. The, these headlight buckets actually need a second coat of the blue paint. And I want to paint these, these rings um, blue as well. That's better. I like the lights better without the, without the bright bezels. They, they would have not been that way. So that looks a little more, um, you know, period correct. Interestingly, these, uh, these exact headlights were actually pirated from a Thames delivery van. A Thames E83W uh, delivery van is where Ford sourced the lights for these E27N tractors. I went around and hit all the grease fittings. I'm not sure when this was greased last, probably a very long time ago, or I might have done it once since it, it's been here. I, I just don't know, but best to do it again. Uh, it's old, so the older these things are, usually the more grease fittings they have on them, and this one had quite a few. So we've got all that done. Now we can move on to something else. My wife has a lot steadier hand than I have, so she came out and painted the, the forts and embossings. They look great, don't they? Last thing we did was change the muffler. Uh, my friend Milt brought me this one. Thanks, Milt. The, the muffler that was on here was a big fat one. It had a great big dent in it, and it was actually the same size pipe as this, so it had like a a joiner pipe with a hose, uh, a muffler clamp and stuff in there. And it, it just looked kind of awkward. Whereas this one, it's got the right, um, the right pop-up. It just slides right over the pipe that's here. So we switched the rain cap over to it. And I think it should just go out this door. It's actually a couple of inches taller than the door, but there's a ramp down and the front wheels will go down the ramp first. And so we should be okay. So uh, we've reached that point where the last thing we're going to do is crank this thing up and see if we can get it outside and run it around the yard a bit. Well, it's running and it's charging. I can't remember what gear is what. So once it warms up a bit and I can slow it down to idle, I'll, uh, I'll try and figure out what gear is what. I might make a little decal for up here, just so I remember. Well, obviously my idea about the muffler ain't gonna work. I'll have to back up and take it off. Well, here she is, outdoors, under her own power. I'm gonna take it for a little spin and see how it works. Oh, this is awesome. I love this thing. I always wanted a little Fordson, but I could never find one, so I got a big Fordson. Oh, the snow is grabbing the wheels. It has no problem plowing through it, though. Don't wanna run over my well, I've already done that. Ha, <laughs> ha, 
<laughs> Put her in second gear. That's a little better. Oh, she's beautiful. I don't want to get too far away. I don't know how much petrol we have on board. Drive reverse. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, let's give her a walk around. Well, I've got all the lights on and the generator is still uh, to the good. That's good. Wow, this is a big beast of a thing, isn't it? Oh, she's beautiful. I'm so happy. Absolutely incredible. Fantastic. So, all in all, I'd say our first uh, test drive was a success. Um, during the test drive, I realized I've got uh, three things I've got to deal with. Number one, I don't, and I don't know if I'll be able to deal with that, there seems to be a bit of an oil leak. Uh, and judging from where it's coming from, I guess it's the, my guess is it's the front crankshaft seal. Yeah, it sure looks like it. And it's running down and dripping off the, off the back of the, um, the front axle wishbone there. Uh, probably not a lot I can do about that. I think it's just got a packing in there. And, um, man, I had this engine all apart. I, I can't remember what I did. Did I put a new seal or, sorry, I just can't remember. I'm drawing a blank. Um, next thing we have to deal with is the... <clears throat> The governor, it will not let the engine slow down. You um, release the, the throttle rod and it, and it still wants to rev pretty high. It won't let you idle it down. If you force the thing down, it's okay. So I do remember one thing I did. Um, I thought that the governor spring may be weak or I kind of think it was already in there. There was a, a shim behind the governor spring. So I've got a brand new governor spring so we just have to um, pop the governor off. We'll take it apart, put the new spring in it, uh, readjust everything, and, and see if that helps. Third thing we have to deal with is um, there's a return spring for the brakes under here that I forgot to put on. And now if you really push the brakes all the way, they stick. So what we'll do is we'll pop this footboard off hook up the spring and that'll be that fixed. Anyway, that's not too bad, just a couple of little jobs. I'll get on them tomorrow. I pulled the footboard off and put a little a uh, little return spring. I don't really think it originally would have had one, but well, it's got one now. So that's that's okay. These things get old, sometimes we need to manip manipulate things a bit to keep them working good. It was just uh, sticking a little bit right down at the bottom, but it, it seems okay now. That's better. Good. I pulled the governor off. It's pretty simple. There's just four bolts around it, and you, and you jiggle it out. And we'll go over to the bench, and I'll show you what I found. We've got a couple of problems here. Um, you can see here's the spring that was in it, and it shimmed with three washers. Here's a replacement spring that I bought, and you can see um, our shimmed up spring is actually taller um, than the new spring. And on top of that, this is our, our uh, plunger, and there's a thrust bearing in between these two pieces. So the original one was a, was a ball bearing, and it would go around and it would cut grooves in these two parts. So uh, what it gets replaced with is a a roller bearing and it comes with two little races. So when you put that all together, it actually ends up being a little bit thicker than the, than the ball bearing was. So adding the little thicker bearing 
plus this longer spring here is what's getting this thing in just out of range a little bit so that we cannot get the the idle slowed down so um i'm gonna put this back together with the original spring with no shims um this new spring it seems to have more tension and it seems to have a lot more coils than the than the original one so we're just gonna put it together like this and see what happens luckily this thing comes apart easily so if i don't like how it works like this we can um take it apart and try something else all right so to put it back together we put this this rotating thing on here the the plunger and that you can see pushes against the against the weights there and then we're gonna we're gonna jiggle this thing back in and we've got to get that fork in there engaged on that on that pardon me I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so that's all back together. Now, what we're gonna do is pull the throttle all the way open, like that, so you can, you can feel it compressing the spring in there. And now, this thing should just barely reach. You can see here, it's a little bit short now. They say you wanna pull this down just a a sixteenth of an inch to go on the ball and we probably got to pull it down a quarter of an inch so we got to lengthen it a bit so I'll just take it off we'll uh, we'll loosen that jam nut and lengthen it some I've got the idle speed slowed down so it'll sit here at a nice curb idle but it's a little choppy and I notice if I if I just pull the choke out a tiny bit it smooths right out so we've probably got a lean mixture and um, I've been monkeying around with the idle screws and I'm not getting much response from them so I might have to uh, take the carburetor apart and have a look in there. I've gone ahead and taken the carburetor apart just to make sure there's nothing blocked or no crap in it because of that, that funny little idle I've got and, and pulling out the choke just a hair straightens it right out. And I wasn't seem to be getting any response from the idle mixture screw, which could indicate a vacuum leak too. So I, I also uh, made sure the manifold was tight and I, I did put new gaskets on it. So I don't think that's the problem. So we're just going to go put this all back together now, put it back on the tractor and see what happens. I also made a, uh, a drain for the carburetor. There's, there's just a couple of different reasons I like having a drain on them. And unfortunately, the way this carburetor sits on the manifold, we had to make a little bit of a, a conglomeration of fittings to kind of get it out of the way. And then that compression uh, nut there, I'll put a little piece of drain pipe down to get the gas safely away from the manifolds. Shining a little better now. It's still got that little put, put, put to it. I'm not sure how to how to tune that out. It, it may just be because of a you know a crappy manifold design or something. Who knows? But it, it drives around. It's got lots of power. I, I'm not complaining about it too much. I fiddle around, moving the timing around, and that seems to be right there exactly where it wants to be. So I'm not going to mess with it too much. It starts right up. It runs good. Like I said, it's got lots of power. We'll just leave her there. Last thing I'm going to do with this is shut it off. Then I'm going to let it sit out here in the cold for a little while and we'll come back and, and see if it'll start when it's cold. All right, well, here we go. We're going to do our last little, little test here and make sure this thing will start when it's cold. It's not really all that cold. It's right around zero or... Uh, 32 degrees for our Fahrenheit friends. Let's see here, let me put this down. I kind of need two hands to do this, get our little leg up. I'll just sit this right down on top of the dash here. So, he push in the clutch. Make sure she's in neutral. Give it some throttle. Ignition on, hit the starter. Oh, there 
she goes. I kind of wonder if the carburetor leaks a little bit when it's turned off. There we go. Got to get her cleaned out some. See if she'll drive. No. quite a project it's been going on for a year and a half I I would guess it's it's uh, you know it's on the front burner on the back burner on the front burner on the back burner waiting for parts looking for this trying to figure out that but hey in the end we've made this thing into something you could start up and drive around and after it being lawn art for so many years I didn't think really there was a lot of hope for it but hey we got our hands in there, we figured out what it needed, we fixed it up, and it's it's back doing its thing again. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I, I think it's kind of snazzy, especially uh, the, the dark blue and the bright orange out there sitting on the, on the snow. It really looks sharp. Uh, I can't wait until spring or summertime when we can get it, out to, uh, get it out to a couple of tractor shows and get it outside and have some fun with it. Anyway, that'll do it for Project Fordson. Um, I, I hope you learned something about forts and tractors. I sure learned a lot. And I hope you'll come back for more of our adventures on the Claremont Classic Garage. Until then, thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you next time. So long.